Hi, I am so glad you're here today. Thank you for checking out this video. I didn't upload a big video last week because life is a little bit crazy, but I did put out three different shorts, actually four, I think, and that is way more than you usually get out of me. So I hope that made up for it. But I didn't want to skip out this video because it has literally been two weeks in the making and it is the final week of the month. And you know what that means. It is style study time. And today's video has been requested five separate times told you I'd get back on the request so massive thank you to bangers4785 idrlc2123 the Rugio Mon channel, um, Literactive and Stan Mamala 6911, I know I butchered that, um, for requesting this video because today we're taking a look at the incredibly stylized, beautiful work of Reno Park, aka Reno Tuna. If this is your very first style study, hi, welcome, I am so glad you're here because today we're going to level up your art by like a million percent. Style Study is a regular series we do here on my channel where we take a look at some of our favourite contemporary artists, analyse their work and see what we can learn from it. Keyword, learn. We're not here to copy anyone's work or plagiarise their style, we're only here to learn some cool art tips and tricks and see how we can apply them to finding our own unique art style. I usually structure my style studies in three parts. In part one, we'll take a look at Reno's work, analyse their style and see what we can learn from it. Part two will be a study of one of Reno's original paintings. The reference I've chosen today is this one. And in part of three, we'll apply everything that we learned today to an original painting of our own. As always, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to like and subscribe. Comment below your biggest takeaway from this study. And now if you're ready, grab a snack, sit back, and let's dive into another style study featuring Reno Tuna. Reno Park is a character and concept artist, illustrator and game art director from Busan, South Korea. I know I butchered that name, I'm so sorry. Now, while a couple of sources refer to Reno with the he him pronouns, I got nothing from Reno's actual profile, so we're gonna go with they them. You won't catch me misgendering someone at the tail end of Pride Month, never. Their work is a really carefully balanced combination of 2D and realism, so while the rendering isn't completely flat and two-dimensional, it's not super realistic either. So I'm really excited to look at all the nuances in that art today. Reno's beautiful work has garnered them over 880,000 followers on Instagram and over 622,000 followers on Twitter. Now, like I said, Reno's work is actually really nuanced in that there are subtle aspects in each painting that step away from our understanding of what this kind of style would traditionally entail. So instead of everything being super soft and watercolory, you have some really strong hard edges. Instead of perfectly smooth, clean line art, there's a lot of organic movement. And while most manga, as I recently learned from a dear friend, who is big into reading mangas and manhwas is based on storytelling through the scene as a whole, I find that Reno's art is more conceptual. You'll see that a lot of their work is this series of turning objects and animals into human or humanoid characters where there is little to no background info but the concepts are all tied into the character design itself. But as a whole, Reno's art, as I'm sure you can tell, is super manga inspired, which is why I've been procrastinating this style because it is so complicated, but we love a good challenge. Because if there's one thing you need to know about me, it is that I am certainly not an impossibilist. Speaking of this, here's four key characteristics to Reno's art. The very first thing I noticed in Reno's work was their use of lighting. The lighting is actually fairly simple, often just a flat, diffused light that gives everything a uniform appearance or a stronger directional light that creates a little bit of a rim light. 
In either case, it is usually just one strong light source and the light itself is generally just white as opposed to being super warm or cool. It usually hits the character from diagonally above, sometimes creating a strong brightness along the edges which indicates the light source is closer to the character. As a general rule, the light is usually quite diffused with concept pieces that are meant to look friendly and approachable. So here where the characters represent a delicious parfait, a dessert that everyone likes, the characters are lit pretty evenly. And this works nicely with there being a literal child too because kids are often painted to be softly lit in most art styles. With something like this piece however, where this character represents a Doberman, a breed of dog generally known to be fast and fiercely protective, you'll see that there are a lot more hard edges and much harsher transitions between light and shadow. Here you have the same thing with a character inspired by a Rottweiler, another dog known for its agility. Again, very solid transitions between light and dark, plus the vast majority of the character is in the shadow since the light is so sharply angled which makes this character feel a little threatening. So it's not like the standalone character concepts serve to only show a concept, they also make for great standalone illustrations with good lighting and shadow. And speaking of shadow, I feel like those are what make the lighting feel so believable and realistic, because unlike with traditional manga where you have solid, almost flat looking shadows, with Reno's style you see all the shadows that you would see in real life. So there's the ambient occlusion shadow the drop shadows and even the more underrated form shadows and they all follow the lighting setup perfectly as they would in real life. I feel like the lighting is one of the biggest things that helps to take Reno's concept work and elevate it to look more dynamic and visually appealing while also telling stories through the design. Let's talk about the other aspect to Reno's work that sets it apart from general manga or manhwa. No, this video isn't just going to be comparing their art to traditional manga, I promise, but what I found really interesting is how Reno uses hard edges and details to convey texture. Because when we look closely at the materials, there's actually a lot of detail going on there. So the skin, for instance, is very soft, very low contrast and has little to no hard edges. The colours are pretty much skin-like and apart from maybe some edges where the light hits the skin directly, everything else is pretty smoothly blended. Coming to the hair, however, this is where we see a bit more dynamism. While the hair has a lot of hard edges, which lots of hard edges usually indicates lots of texture, Reno rarely ever paints textured hair. It still has a smooth, silky look, so how do they create a smoothness despite so many hard edges? Well, this is where that nuance comes in. Because not only are you thinking of hard versus soft edges, you're also thinking about high versus low contrast. And in order to create the softness despite having hard edges, Reno uses fairly low contrast in the hair. So if the hair is dark and shiny, the shiny bits are actually not too much lighter than the shadow tone. And vice versa with blonde hair, the shadow isn't too much darker than the shiny bits. And this is actually the perfect balance because you can't just paint the hair without any hard edges, we still want there to be some strand and section detail in order to sell the texture of hair. However, you don't want to be painting every single strand of hair because then you lose that illusion of soft and silkiness. See, nuance, that is today's keyword, everyone write it down. <laughs> now, with these principles of how Reno paints the skin and hair, let's see how it applies to the clothing, because guess what? The clothing is usually a mixture of these two methods of shading. Here's a really good example of this character that is based on the azure winged magpie. The skirt here, despite having those stripes, looks super soft and silky. Why? Because Reno has rendered the fabric itself to be softly blended and very low contrast. 
Looking up at the jacket, however, you see lots more hard edges, which are still low contrast in general, but definitely have greater value separation than the skirt does. Or here where the t-shirt looks super silky despite the hard edge fold because the contrast is very low versus the trousers that have much higher contrast. Also notice the shape language of the fold. The folds in the trousers are a lot more angular, making that fabric look a lot stiffer, whereas the folds in the t-shirt are rounder, more tube-like, meaning the fabric is a lot thinner and softer. Plus, in the more textured areas of the fabric, and sometimes also the hair and skin, Reno will sometimes add a little bit of hatching to further indicate a bit of texture. Here you'll see the little blushy lines in the character's cheeks, while here you'll see it in the hair, skin and fabric. I suspect this is in order to add interest and movement to areas of the piece that would otherwise seem flat and boring, but honestly it could just be a stylistic choice because it sometimes lies in areas that are already fairly textured. In either case though, a super cool addition to the texture palette in their work. Let's talk about one of my favourite parts of Reno's work and that is the line art. Yes, I said the line art is one of my favourite parts of their work because it is actually super organic. Unlike with a lot of flat 2D style art that features perfectly smooth, clean lines, Reno actually goes the more organic route where their lines have a more hand-drawn appearance. So looking at the lines around the silhouette here, of course they are clean and extremely well drawn, but there is a jitter there in the line weight. It doesn't go super smoothly from thick to thin. There is a bit of a wobble, but in like a good way. The brush alpha isn't a perfect flat circle, there seems to be a little bit of texture there, especially where the lines taper off, which further adds to the hand-drawn effect. As far as the placement of the lines goes, Reno tends to follow a similar rule as the hard edges, so there's a lot of lines in the fabric, hair and accessories, but very few lines in the skin. Plus, the lines in the softer areas such as the face or the shiny bits in the hair and clothes tend to be coloured a similar tone as the surrounding colour, maybe just a tiny bit darker. So these lines are visible but not interfering with that soft silky effect. Plus, like we saw, there tends to be a little bit of hatching for added texture here and there, which adds a really cool effect to the otherwise super smooth areas. However, one important thing to note about the lines is that Reno always creates a very visible black line around the silhouette. Like, no matter what the subject is, there is always a dark outline around the character, which separates them from the background. Of course, this is great in a compositional sense where you can tell exactly where the character ends and the background begins, but I like to also look for story in the style. And as you can probably guess, I do think this is a super fun way to make the character either stand out or fit into the scene. Since we know that the outline is always dark, we can then think about the values directly around it. Here, for instance, the dark character outline is against a very bright background, meaning the character stands out from the background, suggesting that they may be an unusual character in the world around them. Here, however, the dark outline is surrounded by more dark elements, meaning this character probably fits right into their environment. However, as we've seen so far, Reno's art is all about the nuance, so it is time for me to do what I do best and read way too deeply into things. <laughs> so let's look at the values on the other side of the outlines on the characters themselves. This is one of my favourite examples, the garlic peas. You see how if it weren't for the outline, the character would have blended right into the scene. That suggests this character is probably in an environment where they aren't super odd. However, by then adding that outline to separate the character and the background, it might suggest that even among peers who are very similar to this character, they still stand out. Whereas here, where even the values on the character herself are in stark contrast to the background, everything about this character does in fact stand out from the crowd. 
I know, okay, I'm probably making too many assumptions, but you learned a new potential compositional tip, and that is what really matters. In either case, this is the liner that we're really here for. <laughs> Now, we already know the proportions are very manga-inspired, almost to a point where it is a slightly exaggerated manga. So you have the eyes that are very large as compared to the rest of the head and sit below the halfway point of the face. They are also pretty far apart from each other. Generally speaking, in a realistic face, the eyes are pretty much an eye's width apart. But with Reno's work, they are a little further apart than an eye's width, and this is further exaggerated by the fact that A, there is no real inner corner, and B, the nose bridge starts pretty low on the head. So basically, there's a massive flat area between the eyes that makes them look even further apart. This, of course, creates a baby face effect, especially on the softer, more feminine and youthful characters. The nose is definitely tiny and it's sometimes depicted by a single dot. For the most part, however, Reno indicates the nose via a slight value shift without really painting the nostrils or any solid form details. What really fascinates me, however, is that the character's facial expression comes almost entirely from the mouth and the eyebrows. Let's look at this piece, for instance. She looks pretty and happy and content. Now, I hope Reno doesn't mind me altering this a little to try and teach what I'm trying to say, but we're going to leave the rest of the face as is, but maybe replace that mouth with just a simple line. Now it's a pretty neutral, if slightly sullen look. And now if I just liquefy the eyebrows and pull them down a little bit, without changing anything else in the face, boom, now she's really annoyed. The point I'm trying to make, again, is nuance. It's beauty in the simplicity of showing expression in two often overlooked features in the face when it comes to showing expression. I don't know, that definitely blew my mind. <laughs> but to sum up part one of this study, here are four key characteristics to Reno's art. Number one, the lighting is fairly simple, using just one light source that may be diffused or hard-edged. However, the presence of ambient drop and form shadows add a lot of realism to heavily stylized illustrations. Two, the rendering tells us a lot about texture, where smooth skin has soft airbrush rendering, hair has a little more texture with some hard edges, and clothing has a mix of both. Number three, the line work is organic and has a very hand-drawn, perfectly imperfect feel to it. The line weight helps follow form, but there is almost always a solid, dark outline to help the character's silhouette stand out against the background. And number four, the proportions are very manga-like, with large eyes and an ultra-minimized nose. However, the facial expression seems to come entirely from the mouth and the eyebrows. For our study today, this is the reference that I've chosen because, oh my god, look how cute she is. And also, this felt like a good start because we see proportions, lighting, rendering, and shape language here that pretty much encompasses everything that we've learned in part one. I started with a sketch using my trusty pencil brush from our brush pack, and we can be super loose with our brushwork to begin with. As you can clearly tell, I wasn't looking for measured lines at all. I do tend to start chaotic and then bring order into my sketches with each iteration. And because these proportions are so different to how I usually structure faces, as you can tell, my first attempt at the face looked nothing like the character in the reference. But that's okay, that's why we're here, is to learn and do better. One thing I specifically had to do was to resize and reposition the eyes. I also had to do this with the original painting in part 3, but the eyes are actually a tad smaller, lower down and farther apart than I initially thought they would be. And with the opacity lowered one more time, I then went in to ink the piece. 
Now, what's interesting is that Reno never has their lines super uniform or smooth like we've seen. There is a lot of character and dynamism in the lines alone, and I actually realized that the best way to achieve that is to actually stick with the pencil brush without any stabilizing. You would usually enable a stabilizer for clean lines, but we want that extra wobble here. And look, this is the kind of inks that I can get behind because wow, is it so much easier. <laughs> After a little more resizing and repositioning, it was time to flat the base colors in. Now I mentioned this before but I like to color match as well as I can for this study and I always do this by bringing my pure ref window into the frame and visually color matching. It is great color theory practice so I don't just paste the reference in and color pick directly. I realized that a lot of Reno's work involves some serious color repetition. We saw this last month in the Yoshi Yoshitani study, so I won't go too deeply into it today, but I basically placed swatches of colors down on individual layers first, and then using a Bazir lasso tool, painted in all the flats. And to be completely honest with you, it was actually just getting to this stage that took the longest time. All the rendering from this point onwards was actually pretty quick and straightforward. For the entire rendering, all I used was a hard edge flat round brush with pressure opacity settings, aka my magic brush. I found that this brush gives us the best of both worlds. You have the hard edges in the clothing and hair, but you can also create a softer blend in the skin. I actually found it super interesting that the blue of the hat casts a very noticeable blue glow onto the hair and the collar, as well as some cool toned shadows on the face and hand. Plus, Reno usually paints a red-brown bit of shadow around the lash line, which is a really fun way to indicate the eyelid without actually creating a crease and therefore more texture in the skin. Now, like I said, this is not a style of art that I'm used to, and the more stylized something is, the harder it is to study. So I did have to switch to Photoshop and do a lot of liquefying to try and match the reference as best as I could. The eyes were still too big, the waist was too wide, and the hat was too tall, so I had to fix that. And after a few final touches, here is the finished study. I am so happy with it, but what do you guys think? Alrighty, let's have some fun with the original painting today. Since a huge part of Reno's character design is based on turning non-human creatures and objects into human characters, I thought we could play with that idea. And for no reason other than it was the first animal that popped up on my IG feed, today we're going to try and turn a giant panda into a character. I love pandas, they are so cute, and the black fur around the eyes just really add to the cuteness. So I definitely wanted her to have these large black rimmed eyes. They live on bamboo shoots, and so of course she is wearing a bamboo crown. And because they're fully covered in fur that is black at the shoulders and turns white near the belly, we're going to give her a fluffy jumper with those colors. Plus, the fur around their head is usually white, so her hair is going to be white. And because pandas have black claws to grip onto trees, and because I miss having nails, <laughs> we're going to give her a black stiletto nail. I'm gonna be honest, the background was pretty much just put together quickly because I didn't want it to just be a plain white, but I also didn't want it to take away from the character. So I made a bunch of bamboos in the back, which bonus act as leading lines. This painting was significantly easier to paint, mostly because I wasn't trying to replicate the exact shapes and colors as a different painting, but I must mention I used tons of references to make sure I was really getting the style right. I did notice in all of these references that the hair looked like it had been painted with a flat horizontal brush though, but the tiniest little bit of texture around the edges of each visible hard edge. So I switched to a brush from the David Revoy brush pack. My goal was to try and keep the hair looking white as opposed to grey with a white shine. 
And with this painting, I actually did a lot of blending and airbrushing just to make sure the skin was nice and smooth. Because I had no direct color reference for the skin, I had to build it up in layers of color organically. And while that is so much better in terms of practice, it also means that there were way more hard edges from going over the colors multiple times. I also created a kind of frame around the background with the character popping out of it to kind of echo the composition of some of Reno's more detailed character illustrations. And oh my goodness, look how adorable this painting turned out. And there we have it, Reno Tuna Demystified. Now, like I said, this is very different to my usual style and it was definitely a challenge, but if you found some things that I've completely missed in the study, feel free to leave them in the comments below because I would love to learn from you. And if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, remember to like and subscribe. We are so close to 10K, I can taste it. So um, yeah, I'd love to have you along for the journey and thank you so much for your subscription. On the very off chance that you've never seen Reno's work before, for, which by the way where have you been um, I'll link all of their work down in the description below please make sure to go check them out there is so much you can learn and definitely go show them some extra love for me this week if you want to support this channel I would really appreciate if you could check out my custom brush pack which I made myself there's over 60 brushes that will make your life so much easier when you paint um, I'll link it up here or if you've just enjoyed hanging out with me then you can come check out my discord and Instagram I'll leave links down below and I really love talking to you guys so come say hello on there are there any other artists you'd like to see a style study on in the future first check out my style study playlist you guys I'll leave it down here in the outro I've been doing this for for like years now so chances are I've probably covered some of your faves on the series already but in case I haven't feel free to leave me a comment below or come tell me on the discord server and I'll add your artists to my ever-growing list but that's about all I have to say today so thank you guys so so much for hanging out with me I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have check out some more style studies down here and I'll see you guys on the next one bye